Welcome to the Let's Make Food from Food Kitchen. I have just made some Irish coffees and I'm gonna show you how to do that here in just a minute. First, I thought we'd have a little fun and talk about St. Patrick's Day. That's for you. Please enjoy. So what do we know about St. Patrick? Well, we do know he wasn't Irish, right? I didn't know that for a long time either. We think, or we thought, he was from Roman Britain. And then we learned that that's probably not true. We don't actually know where he came from. What we do know is that as a teenager, he was captured by Irish pirates. He spent some time as a captor, then he escaped. Yay! Oh, but then he was caught by French pirates. Boo. Not very good at being an escapee. So he spent some time as a French captor. He started learning about Christianity. Then he was either released or he escaped again. I don't know. Um, but then he, he continued learning about Christianity and he had a vision that his life's mission was to go back to Ireland and teach them about Christianity. Ireland's a mostly Catholic place. So he goes back there. Um, he starts teaching about Christianity. Um, he uses the shamrock to teach them about the Holy Trinity. You know, the big green three leaf looking thing that we see absolutely everywhere. So I want to make sure there's one. It's said that he used the shamrock to teach the Irish about the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the three leaves of the shamrock. Not sure if that's actually true, but we see the shamrock everywhere all the time now, and they're saying he's responsible for it. Who's they? I don't know. I read it somewhere on the internet. It must be true, right? So moving on, he wasn't actually um, Catholic, so he can't be a saint, truly. One of the other things about him, he did not drive the snakes out of Ireland. There were never any snakes in Ireland, but you know, I guess if a guy needs some credit, we'll give it to him. I would consider moving there just because I don't like snakes. So there is that fact. Moving on from Patrick, let's talk a little bit about a traditional Irish dish. It is not corned beef and cabbage. That's an American Irish tradition. Um, they eat bacon and cabbage. And we're not talking about American bacon, we're talking about Irish bacon. It's a rasher, as they call it. Um, it's a pork loin with a, a fat cap left on it still. They um, salt it and let it brine for, I don't know, four, five, six days. They slice it really thin um, and then they fry it up. That's their bacon. So they make bacon and cabbage. However, that's not what we're going to make for St. Patrick's Day if you're going to follow along with what I'm doing. Because St. Patrick's Day falls on a weekday, I thought I would make a stew because you can make it in the crock pot. You can set it up in the morning and you can go to work and come back and it'll almost be ready for you. So what I'm going to do down in the description, I'm going to post the ingredients for Irish stew and for a soda bread. So we'll get started with that. I'll post them um, on the 16th in the morning. Um, and then once I've posted them, I'll switch the ingredient list over to the link to the videos. That way you can prep your vegetables the night before and then make your stew. Did you know that green wasn't actually the original color associated with St. Patrick's Day? It was red or blue or blue and then red. It was one of the two at one time and then it was the other one. But now it's green. The reason it's green is they believe it makes you invisible to leprechauns. The Irish are very superstitious. I spent a month there and learned a lot about the fairies and the leprechauns and a lot of the Irish storytelling traditions. If you haven't learned about it, please go Google it, look it up. There are some very high regarded Irish storytellers that go around the country and even around the world to tell us the tales of fairies and leprechauns. One tablespoon brown sugar, the darker the better. One and a half ounces of Irish whiskey heavy cream partially whipped. For the Irish cream coffee, you'll need two ounces Irish cream liqueur, one ounce Irish whiskey, and six ounces hot coffee along with whipped heavy cream. We're ready to make our Irish coffee, so what do we do first? Brew your coffee. I have a French press that I've already prepped with some coffee grounds. I'm just going to pour my water in all the way up to about this needs to brew for about four minutes minimum. So I'm gonna set my timer for about five minutes just to give it a little extra time. And while that's happening, three, four, five. While this is brewing, I'm just gonna set it aside out of my way and I'm gonna whip my cream. This is just heavy whipping cream. There's no sugar in it, nothing to make it sweet because we've already got sugar that we're gonna put into our drink. So. We want it lightly whipped. We don't want to make stiff points on it because it's a thick creamer rather than whipped cream on top. So you just whisk until it's a little thicker. Okay, yeah, that's good. I'm good with that. All right, so this, I'm gonna need a spoon when I pour that out, but we'll get to that in a minute. 
So let's, while we're waiting for our coffee to brew, we are going to mix our liquor. This is an Irish whiskey. You can use any Irish whiskey you like. We're gonna do an ounce and a half. There is one ounce and about a half. Now some people like to heat up the glass prior to mixing your drink and they put the coffee in first um, because they don't want to break their glass mug. I pour the liquor in first because that'll cool down the coffee a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and add my sugar and get that dissolving. I'm impatient. I don't want to wait. So while that's going, I try to do all of the steps I can possibly do. So I am going to take just another spoon. I want to keep this one clean for my cream and just stir it a little bit so that can wait five minutes and pour in the coffee. There's our timer. We can go ahead and move on to the next step. Now if you've used a regular coffee brewer, you can skip this part. I'm choosing to use a French press. If you've never used a French press, make sure you get the large grind coffee. If you get fine grind, it can clog up the mesh and build up some pressure you don't want in your coffee. All right, that's ready to go. So I'm simply just going to pour this about two thirds full. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to give it another stir to make sure we get that sugar mixed in there really well. Once I don't see any granulars on my spoon, I know I'm good. The next step is to take our whipped cream and we're going to take the back of our spoon and gently pour it. So the goal here is not to get the cream mixed in the coffee you just want it to sit on top of the coffee, just like so. And then you've got some beautiful layers. And if you don't like a lot of cream in your coffee, you don't have to put a lot in. Just use what you are comfortable with. And this is about four ounces of whipping cream. And that, my friends, is a beautiful Irish coffee. So let's move on to the Irish cream coffee. I'm just gonna set this over here. I'm gonna bring this cup over here. And I'm not going to use sugar this time. I know some recipes will call for the sugar. I'm not a fan of super, super sweet drinks. And the Irish cream has a lot of sugar in it already. So we need one ounce of our whiskey. And we need two ounces of our Irish cream. Again, that was Irish whiskey, of course. Here is one. And Irish cream, of course, is one of my favorites to put in coffee. So I tend to go a little bit heavier, but for the sake of this episode, I'm doing it the way it's traditionally done. I'll do it with two ounces instead of like, I don't know, five. <laughs> okay, that's in my cup. I'm just gonna pour in my coffee. Hopefully there's enough in there. Ooh, I'm leaking somewhere. There we go. I'm going to pour that in. If there's not enough, it's not the end of the world. I can just brew a little bit more, but it looks like I'm okay. Perfect. So now I need to whip some more cream. So I'm going to get that out. Hang on one second. So I need to whip this just like I did for the Irish coffee, except I'm going to whip it a little bit more, not to the consistency of whipped cream with the stiff peaks, but a little thicker than that. And it just, it's really quick. Honestly, it doesn't take that long. And you're going to pour it in with the same technique over the spoon to get that separation. I don't know about you, but my wrist always gets tired. It doesn't matter how many times I do this. All right. I think that's good enough. I'm just going to, again, take the back of my spoon and slowly pour this over so that it creates, hopefully, a layer on the top. If you don't whip it, it's more likely to fall down into the other liquids in the mug. And perfect. There we go. A beautiful Irish cream coffee. So if you'll see the difference in the two. One 
obviously is lighter because it's got the Irish cream liqueur and this one doesn't. So happy St. Patrick's Day and enjoy. If you like this episode, please click the like button. If you enjoy this sort of content, please consider subscribing to this channel. For notifications, click the bell. If there's something you'd like to see us make, please tell us what it is in the comments. As always, recipe and directions are down in the description. And from our kitchen to yours, let's make food from food.